Earlier this week, I took a look at using the Session Storage API as a means to temporarily store form data that a user might want to persist across page refreshes. And in that demo, I had a temporary storage service that I injected into my app component. The app component then used this service class to save and then load information from the session storage. Now, in that demo, I was using the injectable decorator, as you do, and I was using the provided in root. Uh, but what I thought to myself is it'd be great to be able to make this behavior more dynamic, such that it could be overridden in a different context, like perhaps you want to use local storage instead of session storage. And using this provided in semantics, I wasn't quite sure how to do that. Uh, I knew I could probably go into my ng module and override the implementation there, but that sort of defeats the purpose of having this really nice uh, brief syntax that allows me to just define my classes and then include them into other classes. Uh, but thankfully I came across a blog post uh, on tree shakeable and providers that demonstrated that this injectable decorator actually has more than just the provided in property. And if we scroll up, what you can see here is that I'm using the provided in root for my temporary storage service, but then I'm also using this use class. Now the use class is saying for this dependency injection token, use this class as the implementation. So you can see here that my temporary storage service is actually an abstract class, but when you go to inject this abstract class into another component or into another service, the Angular dependency injection container is actually going to use this class, the session storage service, as the implementation that gets injected. And you can see now that my concrete classes, this is my abstract class, and then all of my concrete classes implement the abstract class interface. And here I have my session storage service. And if we scroll down, I have my local storage service, which uses the local storage API. And then finally, I have a in-memory storage service which just uses an in-memory cache and doesn't actually persist it, won't save data across page refreshes, but the point is to show the dynamic nature of the temporary storage service implementation. Right, so let's jump back to the top one more time. Provided in root, this is the nice brief syntax that makes these providers tree shakeable to the best of my understanding. Um, and we're saying for this abstract dependency injection token, use this concrete class as the implementation. Now, if we go over to my app component, what you'll see is that this app component just has a couple of links, and each one of these links hard refreshes the page and provides this which search parameter, which tells it which implementation to use as the dependency injection provider. Uh, session storage, local storage, in-memory storage. And again, you'll see that down here, all we know is that we're grabbing that abstract class as the dependency injection token, and then we just use this as something that implements this API. We don't actually know what this implementation is under the hood. Now, how do we go and translate these witches into actual implementations? That's just a little bit of parsing in the app module. So in my app module, and you wouldn't necessarily do this in application. This is just for the demo here. You can see I'm including all three of my implementations. And then I'm creating a providers array. And I'm grabbing that URL parameter. And I'm just switching on it. And if it's the session storage, I don't do anything because that's the default uh, implementation. But if it's the local storage, you can see I'm using the local storage implementation as the dependency injection token. Or in the case of the in-memory storage, I'm using the in-memory storage service as the dependency injection token. And then I'm just using this to define my providers within my ng module decorator. So now if we jump over to the browser, and here are my links. You can see they have session storage, local storage, in-memory storage. And if we click on this, you'll see session storage service in the URL. When parsing the URL, we find that session storage. And you can see that the session storage service was what was injected into my app component. And this is just a little get set test to make sure that the values actually persist. Um, if we try the local storage, you'll see local storage was pulled out of the URL. The local storage service is the implementation that was injected into our app component. And again, our in-memory storage here, in-memory storage found in the URL, in-memory storage service injected into the app component. So again, the app component 
only knows that it's getting something that implements the temporary storage service API. It doesn't care which one it is because they all implement the same API. And that's pretty awesome because uh, the, the semantics for this are super simple, right? I'm grabbing the temporary storage service from my service class. This is that abstract class. By default, I don't need to define anything in my module. This just sort of works out of the box because in our temporary storage service class, we're providing a default implementation for that abstract class that's being used as our dependency injection token. So uh, dependency injection, just just a straight up magical feature of Angular. And uh, I suspect it's a reason that people who try Angular tend to not want to switch to other web application frameworks. It really just makes things uh, super easy to wire together while still also allowing for a very clean separation of concerns. And uh, thank you very much to uh, Manfred and his blog post on tree shakeable providers. I had no idea that you could even use anything but provided in, in the injectable. Uh, quick side note, it doesn't even seem to be well documented, but uh, it works and and I guess it makes a, a you know, the compiler doesn't complain. So it's awesome.